Chapter 2. The Basic Rules The key to becoming a master algebraist is comprehending the finer points of Yasuga's first theorem. Master Mira Moreau, prime algebraist of the second order. Welcome to the quick start rules for the Coriolis, the great dark role-playing game. This quick start contains a condensed version of the core rules, as well as pre-generated player characters and the adventure, the Sky Machine, ready to play. The players. All players except one portray adventurers in the world of Coriolis, the Great Dark. These individuals are called explorers. You decide what your explorer thinks and feels, what they do and say, but not what happens to them. It is your job as a player to immerse yourself in your explorer. Coriolis, the Great Dark, is best suited for three to five players. It can be played with more or fewer players than that, but then you may have to make certain adjustments to the adventure. The Game Master. The final player is the Game Master, or GM for short. The GM describes the world of Coriolis, the Great Dark to you, portrays the people you encounter on your expeditions, so-called non-player characters, or NPCs, and controls the creatures lurking in the Great Dark. The game is a conversation between the players and the GM, back and forth, until a critical situation arises where the outcome is uncertain. Then it is time to break out the dice. Read more about that below. It is the GM's job to put obstacles in your path and challenge your player characters, forcing them to show what they are really made of. But it is not up to the GM to decide everything that happens in the game, and certainly not how your story is supposed to end. That is, decided in the game. It is what you are playing to find out. This, uh, all you need to play is this quick start. The pre-made explorer sheets, a few pencils, and some dice. Coriolis, the Great Dark, uses six-sided dice of two colors. Later, two types of custom dice for the game will be released. Base dice, golden, and gear dice, black. Start playing Adventure Awaits in Coriolis, the Great Dark. All you need to do before playing the adventure, the Sky Machine, which is included in this quick start, is the following. 1. Decide who will be the GM. 2. Have each player pick one of the pre-generated player characters. 3. The GM reads through this PDF and becomes familiar with the rules and the adventure. The players are welcome to read the rules as well, but must not read the adventure itself. 4. Let the game begin. Measuring time. Three units are used to measure time in Coriolis, the Great Dark. Rounds are used in combat, while stretches are used when exploring. The final unit is the shift, which measures time when trekking or on the ships during expeditions. A round is 10 seconds and is enough time to perform an action in combat. A stretch is 15 minutes and is enough time to search a room. A shift is six hours and is enough time to hike 15 kilometers or perform duties on a ship. Your explorer. Your explorer is your tool. Your eyes and ears in the game world Take your explorer seriously and portray them as if they were a real person. Try to truly put yourself in the explorer's boots. It will be more fun that way. The full core game of Coriolis, The Great Dark, describes in detail how to create your own explorer. To keep track of your explorer, you use a character sheet. At the end of this quick start, you will find four pre-generated explorers with filled-in character sheets ready to head out on an expedition. Explorer Role You all play explorers, but with different backgrounds and a specific role in your crew. Delver, Scout, Burrower, or Guard. The pre-generated explorers fill all these roles. Attributes Your character 
has six attributes that indicate your basic physical and mental capabilities, each rated on a scale from two to six. The higher the score, the better. Your attributes are used when you roll dice to perform actions in the game and determine how much trauma you can withstand. Strength, raw muscle power and brawn, agility, body control and speed, logic, intelligence and power of deduction, perception, awareness and vigilance, insight, mental stability and sharpness, empathy, charisma and social intelligence, health, hope and heart. To measure how much trauma you can take, the game uses three numeric ratings, health, hope, and heart. You have a number of health points equal to the sum of your strength and agility scores. Health is degraded by damage. You have a number of hope points equal to the sum of your logic and empathy scores. Hope is degraded by despair. You have a number of heart equal to the sum of your insight and perception scores. Heart is degraded by blight. Talents. Talents are special skills, traits, and abilities that can benefit your explorer in various situations. They are important as they determine, along with your attributes and your equipment, how effectively you can perform certain actions in the game. Some talents allow you to perform specific feats or access resources unavailable to others. Talents that give you bonus dice range from plus one to plus three, depending on their level. The pre-generated explorers at the back of this booklet include descriptions of their talents. No talent? You can always roll to perform an action even if you have no level in a talent. In that case, you only use the associated attribute plus any modifiers from relevant equipment. How to use talents. Talents describe special skills and traits and as such can often be used with different attributes. It is up to the GM and players to decide what attribute to use in a certain situation. For example, the talent Ruin Delver can be used to lead the way through a ruin using agility, but also to understand the structure of the ruin by using logic. Quirk. A quirk is a peculiar aspect of an explorer's character or behavior, which helps you to play out her habits and manner. Each pre-generated explorer has a quirk. In the full game, the quirk affects how much experience you gain. The bird. Your crew is not whole without its bird. Some crews don't trust the critters, but those ones won't be out there for long. The blight will probably get them sooner or later. Birds come in many forms. The bird has a health value and energy level, where the latter decides how much it can use its abilities. In the core rules, your explorers will be able to develop the bird with new abilities using experience points. Equipment. Your explorer is nothing without their equipment. You must write down all the equipment you are carrying on your character sheet. Any weapons at hand, as well as the armor you are wearing, are listed in their respective boxes, while other equipment is recorded under inventory. Write down one possession per row. If it is not listed on your sheet, you do not have it with you. Keepsake. In addition to your equipment, you can have a keepsake, an item of great sentimental value that you always carry with you. A keepsake is always a tiny item with no practical use. But once per gaming session, you can use your keepsake instead of one hope when pushing a roll and rolling a one. Encumbrance. You can generally carry strength plus six items in your inventory without difficulty. Only the items written down in your inventory count towards your encumbrance. Talents and different equipment can increase your carrying capacity. Weapons at hand. You can have up to three weapons at hand, which means that they are worn on your belt, in a holster, bandolier, or otherwise readily available for use in combat. Weapons kept at hand are recorded under weapons on the character sheet and do not count toward your encumbrance. Armor. 
Any armor, including helmet, worn on your body is recorded under armor and does not count toward your encumbrance. Ammunition. You do not have to count every bullet you are carrying. Instead, you count magazines for slug weapons or batteries for energy weapons. Most firearms have large enough magazines or batteries for you not to need to worry about counting shots during a fight. Just reload when the fight is over. Some weapons and situations count as exceptions. Read more in Conflict and Combat. Magazines and batteries count as light items. Supply. The world of Coriolis, the Great Dark, is unforgiving, and you need to overcome a lot to survive to the end. Lack of air, food, water, and electric power can be deadly. These resources together are called supply. You don't need to track supply at all times. In the confines of one of the great ships, or in Ship City, you have all the supply you need. During an expedition, this changes, especially when you start a ruined delve. Then the GM lets you know when to start tracking supply. You track supply together on your group sheet using the supply rating. A higher rating means more supplies. As you delve deeper into a complex, you use supplies, normally one supply per marker of depth traveled. Supply encumbrance. Various items including oxygen bottles, tanks, water casks, rations, batteries, etc. are all classified as supply for your character sheet, regardless of their individual nature. Four points of supply will take up the same space or cause the same amount of burden as one single item. Heavy and light equipment. Extra heavy or cumbersome equipment is harder to carry. Heavy items count double and thus take up two rows in your inventory instead of one. Some equipment may even require three or more rows. Alternately, some equipment is considered light. Such items require only half a row, meaning you can have two pieces of light equipment on one row. If a piece of equipment has no specified weight, it is always one. Tiny pieces of equipment, small pieces of equipment that can be hidden in a closed fist are called tiny. Equipment of this size does not affect your encumbrance at all. Tiny items are recorded in their own section on the character sheet and do not take up any space in your inventory. Over encumbered. You can temporarily carry more than your normal encumbrance limit. In that case, you must make a strength roll whenever you want to move in a round of combat or walk for a shift of travel. If the roll fails, you must either drop what you are carrying or stay where you are. Carrying others. Sometimes your fellow explorers get hurt and you have to help them. While carrying another person, you automatically count as over-encumbered and cannot fight in combat. How much to pack? A normal delve will require between 30 and 60 supply points for a crew of four. If more supply is needed, the explorers will have to set up base camps. Read more in the rules for delving. Playing the game, the world of Coriolis. The Great Dark is a perilous place filled with conflict and misfortune. Sooner or later, things will come to a head and a conflict will ensue. Then it's time to break out the dice and use your attributes and talents. Rolling dice to attempt something difficult or dangerous. First describe what your explorer is trying to achieve. Then add the attribute score that best matches the challenge at hand and the level of any one applicable talent you have. Grab that many base dice. If you have the right tools, you also get a number of gear dice. Then roll the dice. For your action to succeed, you must roll at least one six. If not, your action fails. If you roll more than one sixes, you perform your action exceptionally well and can get a better outcome. See conflict and combat. When you roll, generally, the adventure text will indicate when to roll dice and what attribute to roll for, as well as suggest talents. However, the GM can always call for a roll in a situation they feel warrants it. We recommend 
against excessive dice rolling. However, saving the rolls for dramatic and tense situations where something is truly at stake. Gear bonus. To improve your chance of success, you can use your equipment. A useful object will give you a gear bonus, a number of gear dice to roll. You roll your gear dice together with your base dice when you perform an action. Normally, you can only use one piece of equipment at a time. Not all equipment provides a gear bonus. Sometimes a specific piece of gear is needed just to perform the action. Pushing your roll. If you are desperate to succeed with a dice roll, you can choose to push the roll. This means that you grab all the dice that didn't show a six, one on a base die, or a one on a gear die, and roll them again. You get a new chance to roll sixes. Usually you would only push a roll if you failed it, although you can push your roll even if you rolled one or more sixes in the first roll to get more sixes to increase the effect of an attack, for example. Pushing dice rolls is not without risk. It increases your chances of success. But if you push too hard, you suffer the consequences and lose hope. If you roll one or more ones on your base dice when you push your roll, you lose one point of hope for each one rolled. It doesn't matter which attribute you've used for the roll. Equipment breaks down. When you use a piece of equipment and you push your roll, it might get damaged. When you push a roll, you must re-roll all gear dice that don't show one or six. For every gear die that shows one after you have pushed the roll, including the dice in the initial roll, the gear bonus decreases by one. The equipment has been damaged and is not as effective anymore. If the gear bonus reaches zero, the gear no longer works at all. Repairing equipment. Equipment can be repaired. It takes a shift and a roll for logic and any applicable talent. A successful roll repairs the equipment with the gear bonus fully restored. If the roll fails, the gear bonus is permanently reduced to the current level. But if the gear bonus is zero, the equipment is destroyed beyond repair. Helping your fellow explorers. You can give hope to another explorer if they are losing it and succumbing to despair, and vice versa. But this is not without its cost. You yourself will lose the hope instead of your fellow explorer. You must decrease your hope by one just to help the explorer, in addition to anyone rolled by the other explorer on the pushed roll only once. You can only push your roll once. If you don't succeed on your second try, you just have to deal with the consequences of your failure. However, some talents can allow you to push certain roles a second time. Difficulty. Normally, the GM does not assess how difficult an action is. You only roll dice in challenging situations. But sometimes, the GM might want to underscore that external factors either help or hinder an action. This is done by adding or removing base dice to your roll. This is referred to as plus one die, plus two dice, etc. And conversely, minus one die, minus two dice, etc. You can never go below one die. Help! Other explorers or NPCs can help you succeed at a dice roll. This must be declared before you roll any dice. It must also make sense in the story. The individual helping you must be physically present and have the capacity to support your action. The GM has the final say. Whenever someone helps you with a roll, you get one extra base die. A maximum of three explorers may help you, thus adding three base dice. In combat, helping counts as an action. By helping someone else, you lose your own action that round. NPCs can help each other just as explorers can. Opposed roles. Sometimes you must beat your enemy in an opposed role to succeed with an action. This means that both you and your adversary roll dice. If your roll fails, your action fails as well, regardless of your opponent's roll. If your roll succeeds while your opponent's fails, your action succeeds. If both of you succeed with your rolls, 
your action succeeds if the result of your roll has more sixes than your opponent. Opposed rolls can be pushed, but only if you are the active party. This can be done even after your opponent's roll. Group rolls. When you face a challenge with your fellow explorers, you don't roll dice separately. Instead, you choose who among you is best suited to take on this challenge. You decide who this is. The others may help them if it's relevant to the situation. If the roll fails, it counts as a failure for all of you. You are not allowed to try one time each.